Yeah, I'm thinking as well uh, what you mentioned earlier about this joy that he was experiencing. Perhaps it was also, you know, as a result of the fact that this was uh, in the period after the Second World War and whatever had happened, uh, especially in Paris where he had been located. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, a, it's an interesting one. I think it's something that I, I, I'm personally always fascinated by these kind of dichotomies, these transitional stages in artists' careers whereby they are suddenly given new impetus. Um, the exhibition that we, that, precedes the Picasso exhibition in London is a exhibition of the painter Hans Hoffmann, who was a German painter who taught the abstract expressionist painters in, in New York in the, in the 50s. Uh, and a lot of his work, his, the, the drive that took him into abstract abstraction was the violence of the Second World War. Uh, and so the exhibition the gallery shows the works that he was making during the war and then immediately after the war. And it's, and again, it's to say, it's a relationship that really fascinates me. And the same thing is, is, is true of Picasso because he had painted Guernica, uh, and had been celebrated for it, but also reviled by Franco's government and by the, the Nazi party for its political content. Um, I mean, there's a great story of him walking around Paris and having a Gestapo officer come up to him with a postcard or an image of, of uh, Gerlika, who and the, the officer saying, you did this, question mark, and, and because he said, no, you did. Uh, and it's kind of like this, the anger that he felt was and his and placing himself in Paris is very much an act of retaliation and of resilience. I mean, there was all sorts of speculation that he worked with the resistance, although none of it's ever been proven. And I think having survived that and got to the end of it and accomplished that ambition of kind of remaining in Paris, albeit with the help of the authorities not letting him move very much, he was then able to take that as a sort of personal badge of honour and then move on. Uh, and it's important to say that this is not in itself kind of a unique moment. I mean, he paint, he has his famed blue period in Paris and then he takes himself away, moves to the rose period, takes himself out of that, moves to Cubism, takes himself away from that, moves to neoclassicism, moves to surrealism. Like he's constantly in an act of reinvention. And so this is just one of those stages. The only thing that I would add is that at the age of 64, when uh, Paris was liberated, he is now at a point of being slightly more conscious of his own mortality also.